morning everybody we're at the flying j in niskew alberta just south of edmonton we're about to go pick up our next load that's going to take us back to winnipeg my appointment is for 6 a.m this morning and it's 5 30 and it's right over there right around the corner so i'm going to show up there about 5 45. that's what i try to tell myself for when i need to be at an appointment if they make the appointment for 6 a.m i try and tell myself i've got to be there for 5 45. That way, because for some reason, one or another, something always happens, right? And if we get delayed just a little bit, well, it's okay. As long as it's just a little bit. You gotta stay focused. I don't know when they want this in Winnipeg. I won't be able to get there today. I, if I hurry, maybe I can get there late tonight. I can get close. Probably get to either Brandon, Ports of Prairie maybe, which is almost all the way to Winnipeg. And then they'll probably want it delivered tomorrow morning is what I'm thinking. We'll have to see. But yeah, we are headed back towards Manitoba from here. And I'm not too sure what we're loading. It's coming from an equipment place and is going to an equipment place. I don't know what they mean by equipment. Farm equipment, construction equipment, truck equipment, car equipment, I don't know, workout equipment. <laughs> what kind of equipment? I don't know. We're gonna throw it on the trailer. We'll worry about that then. Whatever it is, we'll tie it down and go to Winnipeg. So let's talk about the importance of knowing where you go before you go. I had to back in off the street over there. I knew this because I looked this place up on Google Maps last night. I knew I was coming here and I'd never been here before. So I wanted to know where the entrance would be, what's the best way of getting in there, is it tight? Is there lots of space? I wanted to know before I went. So I looked on Google Maps of where it was. I saw it's a pretty tight yard. I'm like, well, it's going to be hard to turn around back there. So I went into Street View, where you can pretty much take a walk down the street. And I saw a big sign at the end of their driveway there that said trucks must back in. Like, okay, so that makes sense. So I'm going to have to back in off the street. So now I don't want to blindside back it in. So I'm going to have to go around the neighborhood and come in in such a way where my driver's side is facing the driveway so that I can back in easier. If I hadn't have known that, the shorter route would have been to come up from the other way and then the driveway would have been on my passenger side. And then I would have had to back in blindside or just go turn around somewhere and come back the correct way and do it the easy way. But that would have wasted time because right when I got here, uh, the shipper got here as well. Uh, I was about 15 minutes early, and so was he. So he told me, hey, while I get ready and get everything started and opened up, you can back on in, and by that time, we should all be ready. It worked out great. Had I had to go turn around yet, you know, would, who knows where I could turn around. Can you hear that? Something's going on over there. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. But yeah, that, uh, that whole situation, uh, there was no confusion because I knew before I came. So if you ever go to a new place, you should use the tools that we have available to us today. The technology we have available to us today, it makes things a lot easier. Go on Google Earth or Bing Maps, whatever you use, I use Google. Get a good feel for the neighborhood, figure out where you need to go, find out where the best route would be to get there. And then go on Google Street View and get a good look at the front of the building and the driveway where you have to enter. See if there's any signs that are there that are like, hey, trucks take the next entrance or no trucks at this entrance or maybe there's a sign that says exit only, trucks use rear entrance. You know, read all these signs, walk around the, the neighborhood, walk around the neighborhood on Street View so that when you get there, you're not surprised. You can act like you've you know, been there a hundred times before, you know exactly what to do helped me out a lot today so now he said this is not going to be in the way here at all it's good got an empty trailer we're going to be loading up some of uh, this stuff looks like it will be parts for equipment take it to Winnipeg this is an industrial zone in Niskew Alberta the whole neighborhood smells like chemicals <laughs> Smells like uh, 
Uh, smells like when, uh, if you guys have ever lived in the countryside before where they do crop dusting. It smells like the chemicals that they spray on the fields. It's probably terrible for me. I prefer the smell of diesel exhaust myself if I have to pick a poison. So I'm back at Flying J. I'm loaded, parked right beside this beautiful Jade truck. What Jade truck isn't beautiful, right? I'll tell you what, that fleet has so much of my respect because they all keep their trucks so clean and the owners really love them too. They take them to all the truck shows across North America pretty much and they win a lot of shows too. They got a lot of really nice trucks. They, like, they look like they just rolled off the showroom floor, right? But they're working trucks. I don't know how they keep them so clean. Must take a lot of work and effort. I'll show you my load here real quick. We got some steel. It looks like these are uh, storage for in uh, warehouses, right? Like these will be like the sides and then those will be the shelves, shelving maybe. I might be wrong, that's what it looks like, but uh, that's what we're working with. Let's take this home. This has to be in Winnipeg tomorrow, about 1400 kilometers or 900 miles. Right before this whole area in front of me plugs up too much. I think I'd still be able to get out either way, but let's get rolling. I want to go home. Let's get out of here. Turn signal on. Where are you turning? Oh, over there. Okay. All right. All right. All right. turn into the lane you're supposed to turn into the inside one yes you are but you might not you never know you're supposed to turn into the inside lane but so many people I like got turn right into the outside lane right away because they want to turn right so it makes sense right take highway 16 all the way back home through Saskatchewan uh, once we hit Saskatoon though we're gonna hop down on 11 I believe it is and go through Regina it's 30 miles further that way but you get four lane divided highways the entire way then as opposed to the single lane on the other option well two lane one lane each way single lane each way you know what I meant Karen we have already crossed the border almost a block before you figured it out and the time zone does not change I don't know what she's smoking some of them funny cigarettes man
Lloydminster, Saskatchewan. Just entered the great, the beautiful, the vibrant, the bustling province of Saskatchewan. I want to get all the way through here and into Manitoba tonight. I have 11 hours left to go and I have 10 hours left that I can drive tonight. So we'll probably get to Brandon is what I'm thinking. Brandon, Manitoba. Stopped in Chamberlain, just because it's an easy place to stop. Got to slow down for town anyway, and they have this parking all along the side of the road here, plus all of that parking in there. So it's easy to just quickly stop in here, check the straps, grab a quick bite to eat, or make a quick bite to eat in the truck, and then carry on. It's not like you got to go like way off the road, all these driveways and everything. So it's still good. My tarps are in here. Good. 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 I like to check these all several times a day. I'm a little bit paranoid, but I've never lost anything, so. This little guy on the back here was making me a little nervous at first, but I've become more comfortable with it now. It's not going anywhere. They wanted to put this thing up on top there but I figured the wind would catch it too much with all of the shrink wrap. I got them to shrink wrap it more and I didn't want uh, the wind to catch it. So I figured I'd put it behind all the freight on the back of the trailer so that the wind goes around it and doesn't hit it straight on, right? So it's been a perfect and beautiful day. It's a beautiful day for trucking. I keep running into you guys out here though. So that's pretty cool. I got to meet a whole bunch of you on this trip already. Every place I stop, Someone has come and uh, introduced themselves to me that watched the videos, so thanks guys. I love meeting you guys in person, because you guys get to see me every day. You know me pretty well. I don't know you as well, so it's nice when I actually get to meet you. So if you do see me, don't be shy. Come and say hi. here for 10 hours just in case if they send me into the US after I get unloaded that way I'm good to cross I only have to stop for eight here in Canada before I can move again but then I can't cross into the US until I stop for 10 consecutive hours it's a little dark. 
dark here. I thought they'd have a few more street lights. You know, they have these signs everywhere here. No trucks are supposed to go and park in this area in front of me. There's always trucks parked in that area. Always. Fixed all these bottles. Continue on this road for 305 kilometers. I don't think this road is that long, Karen. I don't, I don't think it's that long. We're in a rest area. Oh man, man, I can't avoid these ones. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna find a parking spot here and uh, call it a night. I'll talk to you in a bit. Found myself a nice parking spot in the back corner. I think that's the same jade truck that we were parked beside in Nisku this morning. I'm pretty sure it's the same one. But they all look so nice. So it's hard to tell them apart sometimes. They're all amazing. Sky is still a little bit bright. The time is about 11.30 at night right now. The sounds of the highway right here. I know they're sort of being drowned out by somebody's APU over there, but that's okay. It's far enough away that it won't bother me tonight. Got a nice rest area there if we need it. Running water, that's always a bonus. And here we are. Under the light. In the back corner. Away from everyone else so we get some peace and quiet. Like I always say, a little bit of noise at night doesn't bother me, but if I have an option, I'm gonna pick the quieter spot. Every time. And that's what we did here. Just the sounds of the crickets. So our entire load has made it to Manitoba. Didn't lose a single thing. I'm gonna deliver this tomorrow. It says on my paperwork that they want this delivered the day after tomorrow. So I mean, if that's the case, then I guess I'd just be bringing this to the yard. I'll have to communicate with the load gods tomorrow and see what the plan is. But my plan is to deliver it if I can. Doesn't matter to me. If I do bring it to the yard, I mean, I guess I'll just grab something else and go. Well, whatever the plan is, it'll work out. So to summarize today, it was a day of prairies, flat land driving. So it took about 12 hours of driving to get here. Like I said, we drove about 1,060 kilometers, which is, I'll actually find out the exact number for my American friends in America speak. Uh, the way to find that out is you go 1,060 divided by 1.61, 658 miles, full day. Tomorrow's another day. I only have three and a half more hours to Winnipeg. It, it all depends what I got to do with this freight. Now I'm a little bit confused because, oh, the GoPro's jealous that I'm not paying it attention. It turned itself off. Yeah, I got the Sony here. Three and a half hours to Winnipeg. So I'm a little confused because I was just assuming that I'm going to deliver this tomorrow afternoon. But if they only want it the next day, well, I can't sit around and wait for that. Probably what I would do then go and leave this in our yard. One of our city guys would deliver it, I guess. And then I'd just grab something else and do a turn and burn. That might actually work out best for me. Because then I don't have to waste my time going into the city, because this this is delivering like quite a ways into the city. There's going to be traffic, there's going to be city people. <laughs> city people. <laughs> They're always in a hurry. You know this? Are you a city person? Why are you always in a hurry? Where are you going? Always in a hurry. Nobody likes being 
you know, behind the truck. So anyway, if I have to deliver it, I'm perfectly fine doing that. But hey, if they're gonna get one of the city guys to do it, it would work out much better for me that way because then I can just drop and hook pretty much. Just turn and burn. Drop my load and hit the road, you know? So tune in tomorrow to see what adventures we uh, find ourselves in then. You can find me on all social media platforms. Uh, links are all down below my video in the description. If you're on a mobile device, you just click the title below the video. A whole list of stuff and a whole description of who I am and what truck I drive is down there as well. I get a lot of repetitive questions in my comment sections, and that's totally cool. I appreciate the comments. It helps with the algorithm. But sometimes I don't answer them because the answer is literally in the description of the video. So uh, if you have a question about the truck I'm driving or about who I am or what my channel's about, down below in the description is the answers to everything. Also, all the links to all the social media that I have. Remember, there's this is just your friendly reminder that there are scammers in my comment sections. They're on every YouTuber's comment sections. They're very annoying. They'll use my profile picture and a very similar username. It's not me. Uh, YouTube has now gone to, uh, what, what do they call them now? Handles. So when I leave a comment on your comment, or if I reply, or if I leave a comment down below a video, it'll leave my handle, like an at symbol, and then trucker underscore Josh. And then, so that you know it's me, it's a verified account, so it'll have a little check mark beside my name. And if you're still unsure, click on the username and see if it takes you to my channel, where all my videos are. Because what these scammers will do, you guys all know this, but for the new people, let's just fill them in. They'll create an account, they'll steal my profile picture, put it on there, on their account, and then they'll create a username very similar to mine. Like, just with the underscore in a different spot, or, you know, very similar. And then they're going to try to get you to go to, like, WhatsApp or Telegram or some, something like that. I don't have a public WhatsApp that I, that I share with anybody. I'm not going to tell you to go to WhatsApp. I have very few friends of mine, the personal friends of mine, that use it. Uh, so I, I never use it. Uh, they might tell you to go to Telegram. I don't have a Telegram account. I don't know what that is really. It's another social media platform. I'm not interested in it. I don't have one. They're going to try to get you off my page. Now, I'm never going to do that because you're already on my page. I'm not going to tell you to go somewhere else. I want you to stay here on this page as long as possible. That's why I always like post these videos around my face here at the end of my video and tell you to subscribe and leave comments and stick around as long as you can because the longer you're here on my page, the better it is for me. So why would I send you somewhere else, right? And if I'm going to send you to any of my social media platforms, I've linked them in the description of my video so that you have a direct link and a direct way of finding me so you know it's mine now on Facebook I had the blue check mark beside trucker Josh I'm verified there so that you know it's me on on Twitter I have the blue check mark so that you know it's me Instagram still hasn't verified me yet super sad face maybe one day so YouTube uh, Facebook and Twitter I'm verified uh, I'm working on Instagram they're owned by Facebook, right? So if I'm verified on Facebook, why wouldn't... It's all meta, right? It bugs me. <laughs> it's the one social media platform I have that I haven't conquered yet. And then on TikTok, I guess. I'm not verified there, but I don't really do much there. I have one, but uh, every once in a while, the links are all down below. I have to wrap this up. I'm rambling. We'll see you in tomorrow's video. If you stuck around right to the end of all of this, thank you. You are hardcore. Leave me a comment down below telling me I am hardcore. I'll see you tomorrow.